What's up, people? Welcome to this episode of the By the Hood podcast, a webcast, because I don't know how you're consuming this content. I'm your host, as always. My name is Jimmy, and as we start off every show, that is with gratitude. Thank you to our entire community, By the Hood University, MDC Strategy, the By the Hood Ownership Camp. We appreciate all of you. Listen, I got my partner in crime, Core Me Core. What's really good? Man, everything is great, man. Every day above ground is a good day, so let's get to it. Absolutely, man. And for those who may be tuning in for the first time, this is uh, our weekly podcast. Uh, we come on and talk about things going on in um, the world of personal finance as well as black wealth. That's our space uh, that we talk about, man. Um, so this will be coming out, you know, uh, when, uh, Wednesday. I'm, trying, I'm not sure the exact date because we drop on Wednesdays. I know the past podcast we dropped on a Saturday because we had missed a couple Wednesdays, so we wanted to drop one right away. Um, but this is dropping on Wednesday, which means that I'll be in New Orleans at FinCon when this drops, man. So if anybody is listening to this or watching this and you're in New Orleans, man, hit me up because right now I'll be in N.O. trying to get some beignets, baby. You know, as they say, yo, I love the way people in New Orleans say baby. You know, it's like it's, it's baby. It's, yeah, I love it. I love it. Anyway, man, with that being said, though, um, we're going to talk about something pertaining to both personal finance and black wealth. I think this is an interesting topic. And as usual, I will share this article in the show notes as well as the description so you guys can take a look at the whole article. But this is an article um, from the Washington Post, but it's about Fidelity, right? So um, Fidelity had put out some information and it talks about, this is from, from a couple months ago, but it talks about how the rebound this year in the stock market um, put more workers into the 401k millionaire club, right? Um, and this is this very interesting data, right? Because of the one thing is about 401ks is a lot. I, I see a lot online, people hating on 401ks, telling you how your your 401k is a scam. What is that in the third? First of all, the most of the people I see saying that are trying to sell you either insurance or one of their things that they they claim to be better. But again, we like to look at the actual data. Um, it's just very interesting to see how these accounts have grown over time from the data that's put out by Fidelity. So according to Fidelity, the balance is over 1 million spiked 26% in the second quarter. Um, and the average 401k balance for those investors was $1.5 million. So these are your millionaire next door types. So one of the interesting uh, quotes, which comes from uh, Mike Shamrill, Fidelity's vice president, vice president for workplace thought leadership. That's an amazing job title, Core. He's the vice president for workplace thought leadership. Yeah, I want to be the vice president of, of thought leadership. Anyway, but his quote is, we found that a growing number of people understand that saving for retirement is a marathon, not a sprint. Rest in peace, Nipsey. Um, so, people are understanding that it's not about short term when you put into your 401k or any sort of retirement vehicle. It's about the long term. Um, so it's, it's just very interesting to see how many people um, have become millionaires based upon that stock market rebound. Core, what are your thoughts when you see um, this information? 1.5 million being the average number uh, for the people that reached that status, people becoming millionaires through their 401k. And also people starting to understand that it's about long-term investing and not necessarily short-term. What what that's some that's where I was thinking, like, it's about time, mm -hmm. right? Because they didn't try to do anything extra crazy. They just went to work every day, then had a portion of their check taken and put somewhere where it can grow. They didn't do nothing amazing. Like, <laughs> you don't mm -hmm. have to do anything spectacular to be a millionaire. That's, that's part of... Um, what we teach and why we teach things. Being a yeah. millionaire is more about how much you can put away than how much you put away. You know what I mean? So what yeah. percentage of what you could put away rather than how much, right? Because they, they some of these people are everyday Joe people. They putting three and five hundred dollars a month away. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and just doing it over a long period of time. It's more about 20 discipline. and 30 years. So they're not they haven't done anything spectacular but they showed up every day somewhere and put money away and had that money grow and that's really the secret you know what i mean like everybody want to give you 
10,000 secrets to becoming rich. The secret to becoming rich is to buy, appreciate, and assets and hold them. You know, the funny thing is a couple of years ago, well, I mean, a couple of years ago, about a year ago, we, we, when we were um, doing a lot of stuff in the community and um, doing a lot of speaking engagements, one of the things we, we had a strategy that we came up with. Yep. Right. And it was very simple. We used to tell people like, try to save to buy one investment property per year. If you can, if not every one every year, every year. year or every three years, right. Yep. Just save a little bit of money so you could buy one door while you're doing that, you know, keep your job invest into your retirement account and buy the S and P 500, right? Don't even like think about individual stocks. Don't even take the time to do it. And the other thing was to have an asset that was decentralized, whether that was gold or Bitcoin and buy a little bit of that. Those three things we used to say, look, if you buy one investment property a year, you buy the S and P 500 at work and you buy a little bit of Bitcoin and just mind your business, things will take care of themselves. And again, by the way, this, this is not an investment advice. Advice. <laughs> It's for educational, informational purposes. But this is something that we were running with. And the funny thing is anybody that listened and took advantage of uh, that information. Was they doing drugs. Yeah, they're they doing well right now. But it's, it's this goes to the whole old adage of, um, you know, time in the market versus timing the market. And I was thinking about something that I uh, shot to our brother, Don, man. Don says something. Um, I think it was in a, one of our groups. He was like, I don't know how to run a billion dollar business. He said, but the great thing about the market is I don't have to. I could just invest in those that know how to run a billion dollar business. I said, oh, that's a pretty interesting way to look at it. Yeah, I said that at one of our conferences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, you, you probably did. But I just recently heard Don say it or, or reiterate it. So I was like, that you know, um, was an interesting way to look at it. But it's it's true. Um but this is just great information and great data because I see so many people who don't understand IRAs, 401ks, because they can be used in so many different ways. Yep. They can be used in so many different ways. Like you can get a self-directed Roth IRA and do pretty much anything under it. Um, there's certain protections legally. Um, there's certain um, benefits tax wise. If you master how to use these specific instruments, all of these things are just instruments, but if you understand how to use these, they can be very, very powerful, especially if you work at a, a job where you're getting a match. Oh, man, that's free money. You're getting a match. Like, I mean, you know, so that's I remember free, and I've told this money. on a podcast several times. I remember working at Johnson and Johnson and seeing people that were millionaires just walking down the hall, every working their people. And because they, you know, figured out how to maximize their retirement accounts. Um, so it was very powerful to do, man. Also, a lot of my folks who are in the fire movement, especially um, our, the black fire folks, all they care about year in and year out is maxing out their deferred compensation, whether that's a 401k or 403b or 457. They want to max that out and they want to max out their IRA. I think this year that we're currently in is about 6,500. So you figure you can, I think it's 22,500 to max out one and 6,500 to max out the other. So you're talking about like 29 grand they're trying to put up every year and do that over, um, you know, a 10 year, 20 year period. I mean, that simplifies things, right? Yeah. And you're talking about 29 grand growing with compound interest over a 10 to 20 year span. Those and those limits will change too. I think next year it goes up to like seven grand or something like that. Don't don't quote me on that, but I think no, I'm just saying whatever the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, let's just say 30 grand around the it first all. year I put into my IRA, and now I have to do like the backdoor IRA, which is a whole other show. I don't want to get into that. But the first year I put into the IRA, the limit was like two G's, it was like two thousand to twenty five hundred. So to see it up to sixty five hundred is dope too. Um, but if you know how to fully flip one of them, especially a self-directed one. Here's what I'll say. I'll leave you, you guys with this. I want you guys to go Google um, Peter Thiel. Google oh, how he used his IRA, no. how much money he has in his IRA. Absolutely. Especially a Roth yeah. IRA where you don't have to pay taxes pulling it out. Um, and it was someone else, the, the, the guy that ran for president, Mitt Romney. Look at Mitt Romney. Yep. This, this Google Mitt Romney IRA. Mitt Google Romney Peter Thiel and Peter IRA. Thiel. Yeah. And, you, and you'll see how certain people who have the information are using these retirement accounts to just run no. the bag to the to At, the moon. Mitt Romney had to um because he was running for president, he had to disclose his job. Mm -hmm. I was like, I knew Mitt had money, 
But I ain't no man had money. Like my man was, <laughs> when I say he got like, his own money. <laughs> yeah, like my man was sitting on something dumb, like three hundred million dollars in the IRA, dog. Like yo, he so here, here, here's another piece of the article that I want to make sure I read out. Right, it says workers who contributed steadily to their plans, even when the stock market took some heart clutching dives, have seen a payoff in their account balances, according to Fidelity, the largest administrator of workplace retirement accounts. The company provides a quarterly analysis of more than 45 million individual 401k and 403b retirement accounts. So it's saying that those that are able to buy, even when it's going completely the other way, are benefiting in the long run. And one of the advantages of, of being an old geezer such as myself, right, is, and I've mentioned this before, seeing different market cycles. But then when you start to read, right, reading is a superpower. And you start to realize all the things that have happened since the market has been in existence. And I bring that up because I know I've seen people now online like, oh, this next recession or this next downturn is going to be different than the rest. But I also remember people saying that in 08, this is going to be, this is different than the rest. Like it was, but it, it also, but again, it wasn't, way, it was, but it wasn't. Yeah. So when you got the market was around for the great depression, world war one, world war two, Vietnam, um, you know, assassinations, yeah, like, Jim Crow, um, mm. you name it, all these things, the great, the great Recession, the dot-com bubble, right, the real estate bubble, like all these things have happened and markets tend to go up, they go down, but it's doing that while still going up, right? So it, one of the things I'll say is, and I know that it's difficult if you have a retirement account or a 401k balance when you see something drop 50%. But if you're able to like, you know, ride that wave and, and still accumulate more while it's down over the long period of time, you'll benefit, man. So I think this is just an interesting. I'm, I'm going to put the link for this article in there. But Corey brings up some great points um, that it's about that discipline and just being steady with it. And here's information to kind of back that up. Yeah. So yeah, we were we had a, a, I think one of those companies. I think it was Fidelity or might have been Vanguard did a study of their accounts, and they said basically if you put the money in an account and just let it sit for twenty years, the chances of you losing money um, on one of these accounts like this mm-hmm. is less than one percent. Yeah, they said it was like zero. Yeah, I thought, you, I thought you were talking about the other study we saw when we talked about the study on our Friday show. I think it was we saw a study from uh, I think it was one of them, one of the retirement Vanguard or Schwab, one of them. But they said <laughs> their best performing accounts oh, were people were dead with <laughs> people dead that were dead and just left their money there because they yeah. didn't touch their money, right? Yeah. And that's another thing about the data when you read through it. Some of the people that make mistakes are ones that are switching from this fund to that fund to that thing to that thing to that thing. As opposed to just you know just sitting still and just you know riding through it, riding through it, yo. Yeah, man. Like so, all the data tells you is that you put up as much as you can, and then you let the market do what it does. So mm-hmm. that's why we had our simplified approach when we you know when people ask us for things, we give them the most simple approach. Yeah, you, know, you buy appreciating assets and then you sit on them. And like, that's yeah. how that's how most of Americans get rich and the crazy part is like the last thing i'll leave with before we um you know in this episode is that i know that it's difficult to just because one of the things i find in um us talking to people every day about money is people look for things to be fun and shout out to uh pastor man antonio eubanks um our business partner and also someone i look up to when it comes to this 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 money thing and, I, and I've told him this um, on one of our classes, but I'll put it here in a pod as well. He was actually on our podcast as a guest. You can look yep. uh, look up the episode. It's um, Antonio, Antonio Eubanks. Eubanks. He was on there a couple of times. But one of the things he said in one of those episodes that's always stuck with me is when you get good at investing, it's boring. Right. And I have a hard time getting other people to kind of like come to that realization because of social media yeah. and because of what they see in pop culture. They want to be, you know, well, they, they want to advertisements. 
dog, I've, I've seen people tell me they want to get into investing. And I'm like, all right. And they're like, well, give me a minute. And then by the time I talk to them, they done bought five monitors. They got computers set up. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? Uh, like, I'm trying to trade and, and invest. I'm like, so what you got all these monitors for? Just go to buy the S&P and mind your business. Like, what are we doing here, right? Yeah. And a lot of it is um because of marketers. Marketers ruin anything, right? Um, so sometimes it's just a simplify thing. The simple things, man, your regular 401k at work, just putting your money there. And, you know, if you do want to get into real estate, and every real estate's not for everybody. So don't, yeah. something else I want to say too, man, real estate ain't for everybody. So don't let nobody tell you, you got to buy a property because it's not. Everybody don't want to do that. I mean, it right. was part of our little wealth plan, but it's not, you don't have to be like me. I'm not a landlord. I, well, I, I'm in real estate, but the thing that I don't do is I, I'm not a landlord. There's a lot of ways to make money without being a landlord in real estate. Like real estate is one of the drivers of this economy. Right? But what yeah. I would tell people, Corey, when I tell them like getting the real estate, they say, well, I don't want to have property. I like, all right. So on that little plan, Take out the single family residential and just add V and Q there. And yeah, just, same, yeah. But, the, but the same rules apply. Don't try to switch up your style. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the that's same. Right, that's um, Carter would say. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's well, you know, people want flashing lights and 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 and, and, and want to be, you know, they got to, they got to, you know, they got to stunt on folks, you know, because that's how a lot of people make their money by stunting on people. And I'm not mad at them for me. A lot of people make their money by stunting on people. That's what they do. I'm gonna quote you on that. I gotta tweet that out. A lot of people, a lot of y'all make your money by stunting on people. That's what they do, though. And I'm not. <laughs> that's not a. Uh, you know, I mean, that is a shot, but it ain't. It's I got just, you. I got you, bro. I got it's you. Not, but it's not a. You know, that's how people make money. You know, what I mean, that's what advertisement is. Um, and sometimes, you know, they'll call it social proof, but a lot of times they just stunting and fronting. On people, you know what I mean? Like, I got a lot of money, you should do what I do. And that's not always the people you want to learn from, right? Uh, because those people sometimes are not, you know, you know, character is who you are when people not looking. Yeah. Right? And so um, there's a lot of people I know that had no money and had great character. And there's a lot of people I know, had, know that had no money and are POSs. You know what I mean? And the same thing goes for people with money. Yeah. And so you got to be very, very careful about, you know, who you associate yourself with, right? Because yeah. we know a lot of people that got money. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't get me to stand next to them in public. You know what I mean? <laughs> in public? See, it was applied. Don't try to switch your style. Yeah, like, not I in public. I sit right down there. and have a conversation with them, and, and have, but don't don't take no flicks of me. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. your online character ain't not, is something I don't want no part of. You know what I mean? Another thing I want to say, man, a lot of y'all got bread and y'all still lame, though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I know a lot of rich lame, lame folks. Y'all cornballs. Anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent there. I just want to say, um, if you have a 401k plan, make sure you look into it, research it. All of them aren't equal. See if you got a match. But understand that it can be a powerful tool and building wealth for your family and your community. So um, make sure to look into it. I'll put the link to this to, uh, to link to this article so you can take a look at it and um, actually click and go into the fidelity uh, research that was done. So there's a lot of links out from this Washington Post article, but it was a good article and um, a good piece of information and data to kind of talk about that, man. Like just be careful online when people telling you don't do your 401k or don't care about the IRA. Like make sure you research what's good for you and not yeah. anybody who's just trying to sell you an insurance product because they make the most commission off of it. Be very, very careful. Um, you know, it's a lot of scoundrels out there, man. But with that being <laughs> said, though, call um, them scoundrels. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of scoundrels out there, man. A lot, a lot of bum folks out there, man. Yo, yeah. I ain't heard that word. No, it's because the time, thing is, bro. I can speak fully about it because, like, so, so to being very transparent, Corey and I are, um, you know, part owners of a, um, a membership group that we have. We come and we share information, we trade, we invest, we do all those things. But you never really hear us push it the way other people push it because we that's not how we feed our families. We actually work in education and real estate, the things that we talk about. So yeah. I don't need to sell courses or anything to make a living because I'm yeah. able to go out there and make my own income. So 
I could speak freely about some of those other things because my lifestyle is not dependent upon yeah. selling coursework. It I, just isn't. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm so, going to take, you know, because I'm spending time um, doing the things that we actually talk about, the last thing that comes to my mind is sometimes marketing what we do. And all yeah, that. I mean, and it's probably and to, our, it's to our detriment, right? But yeah, at the end of the day, of the value that we offer in there, we build a, a real community, a real family. It's not that, you know, I'm, I'm against folks joining our membership group. I'm not because we share a lot of information. Everything is in there. Um, and we share more there than we do to the public. But at the same time, um, I'm saying if if you don't want to be a part of that, that's fine. But I still like to put the information out there because the thing about by the hood um, or by the hood um, side of this is really community based. Right. Mm -hmm. We go out in the community and, and reach people and talk to people and, and help people get accounts set up. Like me and Corey have set in people's living rooms, helping them get accounts set up. So this is our community work. This is our uh, labor of love, so to speak. So whether whether our podcast gets, you know, a million listens or 200 listens or 20 listens, it doesn't really matter. We appreciate everything because if one person listens, that's cool. That's dope. I like, you know, that doesn't matter to us, man, because at the end of the day, I'm still going to sell my properties. I'm still going to rent my properties. <laughs> I'm still going to do my, my own kids value. Going, my, my kids are not going to go hungry. Yeah, I'm going to write my real estate models. My podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to write my real estate models. But when I come on here, I am going to talk about all the scoundrels and all the all the, all the, the dirty <laughs> marketers that are out there. You know what I'm saying? Because I see it all. <laughs> I see it all, man. I'm not like, mad at them though. Like, get your money. Just do anytime I hear the phrase "run the play" or "this is what the wealthy don't want you to know," like I'm like, yeah. oh, here we go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna talk about the dirty scoundrels, but at the same time, though, there's a lot of good <laughs> folks out there doing it work is. too, though, so, right? Yeah, yeah, so we yeah. try to stay positive. So I want to talk about some of the good. It's a lot of good folks out there doing work um, who share their testimony. It's one of the reasons why I love like the um the Black Fire Movement space because people in that space. They don't really care about like you know marketing or selling you anything for the most part. So anyway, I don't want to generalize. That I being said, core. Um, anything you want to say before we end this episode, bro? Yeah, just um, again, always like I like the end. You know, be good to each other. Don't be, don't be, don't be one of those scoundrels that Jim is talking. About. Yeah, don't be a scoundrel, man. Don't, don't be, be a scoundrel. Dirty, like, don't be a dirty rotten scoundrel. Yeah, man. like. Again, you know, actions reveal how your heart really feels and how you treat people is, is about is is the only thing that impresses me is how people treat other people. I don't really care about how much money you is rapping for me. a second. Action reveals how your heart really feels. Yeah, man. My grandmother told me that. My grandmother was my grandmother told me that in the 1980s. Oh, she had bars. Yeah, actions reveal how your heart really feels. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's that's something my grandmother told me when I was like five. You know yeah, what I mean? So, so cuz like whatever you basically whatever you do is who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Good or bad. You know what I mean? Like and she put that on me when I was a young and when I was a kid. Um, you know what I mean? So that wasn't something, you know. I you know, I've been saying that since I was little, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but um that's really, you know, that's really what I live by. You know what I mean? Like action reveals how your heart really feels. That's a bar, man. So we're going to leave y'all with that, man. As we always say, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you keep. Game elevates. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace.